Hey guys, it's Joel over at importsauce.com and today we are going to be talking about how to put a multimedia system into your P1 Volvo S40, C30, C50s. It's been long elusive, there's been hacks, but we're gonna show you what we're gonna do that costs less than a hundred bucks. Stick around. Okay guys, so if you own a P1 Volvo, we're talking S40s, we're talking C30s, we're talking V50s, especially the pre-facelift, so 07 and down, we all know that multimedia and tunes in general inside the car have always been an issue. Uh, there are some aftermarket integrations. You have Blue Power Sweden, which is selling an Android tablet that works into it. The reviews are mixed, and most of the people here stateside are saying, ah, for the eight to nine hundred dollars, no. Other people are going with simply the uh, AUGS, the 2007 AUGS upgrade, which we uh, were the first to fully document. That's over on the website as well. You can go ahead and get an AUGS in your 06, 05s, and you can at least plug in your iPhone and stream your media there. And then there's other people which will take tablets and simply Velcro them on, plug an AUGS jack in, all of that. Um, there are stereo shops that you can go to and you get the Pioneers, you can get the Kenwoods with the Apple CarPlays, the Android, all of that stuff, but they're having to cut out, they're having to just hack up the wiring to make this stuff work. So what we wanted to do is show you a simple way for under a hundred bucks that you can go ahead and get a multimedia system into the P1 and probably do it in less than about an hour or two. So what we're talking about is grabbing an Android tablet and adapting that into your waterfall. So what we're gonna be doing here, and we're gonna be putting pictures, we have the full write-up, but essentially, we have a couple tablets here. What we're gonna be doing is taking the waterfall and we are going to be putting an Android tablet into it. We're not talking about Velcroing it, we're not talking about just sticking it on there. We're actually gonna customize the waterfall, doing some trimming, doing some shaving, and then we are gonna utilize the 3.5 millimeter AUGS jack into our AUGS port. So to mention, if you are 06 or below, you will first have to do the AUGS 2007 upgrade, which is gonna be the CD player, the screen, the AUGS port. That's super simple. We always have a ton of those on stock, so you can message us and we can get you all that hardware and then you can start with at least the AUGS upgrade, plug in your phone, and then this can be a step two. So initially, what we did is we figured 44 bucks, 45 bucks, we got the Amazon Fire Tablet 7. We figured the size was about right for the waterfall where we could do some trimming and we can recess this in to the waterfall slash dash. So we did that last week and what it came out to be was, we ended up trimming the top of the waterfall off. The Amazon tablet is gonna sit right there, flush against your buttons, and then this is gonna rest right inside the dash. Perfect, it fit great. We plugged the 3.5 AUGS into the port, and we just went to mode on here, and then we had Pandora, we had all of this, it was great. The problem we encountered was that the Amazon Fire tablet was a very limited in what it could do. Pandora kept force shutting, uh, it was slow, it just, it just wasn't working great. So what we decided to do is after a ton of research, and it's very hard because nobody's making seven inch tablets anymore, but we did find this and they still sell it. It is the Lenovo 7 Tab and this is exactly the right proportions and it's a Lenovo device. So in the office, we've used Lenovo computers, Lenovo laptops. We still have a Lenovo laptop from probably about six, seven, eight years ago. Things running solid, so I trust Lenovo and it's an Android base. So what we're gonna do here is since we hacked up our first waterfall, we went down to the junkyard, we got another one, and we can see that based on the size, we're gonna be able to keep our top trim, our side trims, as opposed to the previous Amazon where we had to trim off. And we're gonna be able to sink this in and still have a border. 
and I've already fired this thing up. I've been playing with it. This thing is solid. Um, it boots fast, Pandora doesn't crash, it loads, everything's great. So what we're gonna be doing is showing you the pictures on this video of the trimming that we're doing, the installation to recess this in and have this function. One thing I wanna know is, well, it's, it, it, it's not uh, cell phone compatible, it's not this and that. So here's the main apps and it's probably the apps that you're gonna to like too, right? I like Google Maps, the generation three Lenovo 7 has a GPS built in. So you are going to be able to pull data. It's gonna be able to know where you are. Simply, I did a 128 gig uh, SD card upgrade. So I downloaded all of Southern California into the SD card, which means if I'm out and about, I already have the maps here. I don't need cell service to tell me where I'm at or to load the proper map in the directions. It's already here and the GPS in the Generation 3 Lenovo is going to lay on top of those maps I've downloaded. Pandora, same thing. With that memory card, I go to my playlists and I download them. I go to my songs, I download them. My stations, I download them here. And this is all prompted because I've had a recent move up to the mountains. There's very little cell service on my phone. I can't get Pandora to load anything except for my downloads, and I don't want my phone taking off all that. Um, the last thing is, is phone service. So initially we were doing a splitter. We were doing an AUG splitter. So once this is in, we're gonna have the phone come in to the AUGS port. We're gonna have the tablet come in. So if the phone rings, the AUGS will pick it up. If I'm listening to music, the AUGS picks it up. What we're actually doing now is we got a Google voice number and that runs perfectly because it's a Android device. And now I have a car phone number. And I can simply, when I get in the car, I can say, hey, let's go ahead and just forward my iPhone calls straight to the um, Google Voice number. And now everything is handled through this tablet and then exported through the 3.5 millimeter jack into the Volvo factory system. We're not doing anything with the factory system. We have premium sound, we have the Dolby Digital. Everything is retained. It is simply just receiving the sound input from the tablet but now we have the full screen. We have maps, we have calls, we have Pandora, you have anything you need. And then an important note is, even if there's something else, when we're in the car, I simply just turn on my iPhone and it tethers the internet to this device. So if there's something else, oh, maybe you gotta do with this app or that app, I still pull the same um, AT&T network into this tablet just by uh, you know tethering it right in. So. Stick around. As mentioned, we um, started off with the Amazon Fire 7, and this is what we got. It looked great on there, but we are going to show you the final version that we're doing, which is going to be with a brand new waterfall trimming and recessing into there. Uh, quick note, the wiring. So as mentioned, we're going to use the factory 2007 Volvo P1 AUGS jack for power. We are also going to tap into the cigarette lighter, the 12 volt there, and we're gonna run a constant power cable up to here so that when the car's on, it is charging. When the car's off, you're not gonna run out of battery. You don't have to worry, oh, I gotta take my tablet out, I gotta do that. And I think the look is gonna be awesome. So follow us along on this journey and see what happens. First, we need to remove the bezel that covers the screen and the CD deck. Flathead screwdriver, butter knife, pry from the top and pop it out. From here, you're gonna pry out the infotainment screen. It has two push clips, so grabbing on the top and the bottom and kind of working it out will release it. This is also going to expose the two T25 screws that need to come out. Next, underneath your 12 volt cigarette lighter, you can pry that panel up. You will see the remaining two T25 torque screws that need to come out to release the waterfall. From here, you can also disconnect the wiring harness, green plug, on the back of the waterfall. Next, we need to remove the back of the waterfall. You will find eight T15 torque screws. Four of them will be around the shifter. The other four will be centered along the back of the waterfall. Remove those and put those screws aside. With those screws out, pull the back of the waterfall off and set it aside. 
This will expose four T15 Torx screws that hold your control panel module on to the front of the waterfall. You can start by removing those screws now. With those screws out, you will be able to pull the control module off and set it aside. You now have three separate parts, the front of the waterfall, the back of the waterfall, and the control module. From here, we will take the new Lenovo tablet and start tracing our cut lines on the front of the waterfall. We use some painter's tape to hold down our alignment after we leveled it and then used a pencil to trace on the front of the waterfall facing. Next, we used an air-powered cutting wheel to cut along the trace line that we had put out. Be sure to go on the inside of the cut line because you can always trim or shave a little bit more, but if you cut too much, you're going to have to either start with a new waterfall or figure out how to fill that space that you erroneously took out. Next, we use a sanding wheel and we clean up the edges that we were working on for a really smooth and really polished finish. From here, we do an initial test fit to see how the tablet lays on the waterfall. It's safe to note that you may need some additional trimming as we did. This picture shows after a couple rounds of test fitting and making sure everything lined up properly. While we do see some rough edges and some gap around the outside, we're not worried. We're going to be wrapping this in upholstery and that is going to hide any blemishes as well as fill in any gaps that we may have. Here's some cuts of our upholstery work. We're no strangers to upholstery. We've done different door panels, headliners, and, and other trim pieces. So this didn't add much more than a couple hours to the project by just making sure the waterfall was uh, fully suited up. We went with a black suede and it did a great job of hiding any blemishes and spaces and gaps on the waterfall facing. Next, let's talk wiring. We ordered a quick charge 3.0 USB uh, that is going to be a 12 volt. We're going to be able to wire this and it is going to charge our devices. This is going to be the iPhone and we can run a hardwire USB to the tablet. Here you can see we tapped into the 12 volt cigarette lighter behind the shifter, ground to ground, power to power, inline fuse. Here we can see our final connectors. AUGS input, tablet charger, iPhone charger. Here you can see the 3.5 millimeter AUGS jack with a splitter. We're going to plug the single side into the AUGS and then we will be able to plug in both the tablet and our iPhone. Here we plug our 3.5 millimeter AUGS splitter into our factory Volvo AUGS connection. Again, this is from the 2007 model, so if you have 2006 or below, you'll need to upgrade first. We also purchased an elbow, which is a little thinner of an input, which is going to give us more room to clear the edge of the waterfall and place it securely in the dash. One thing you're going to have to do is turn your infotainment control screen backwards. It's not going to fit facing forward because it protrudes past where the tablet is going to have to recess in. The wiring harness is plenty long enough. You can simply fish it and push it in to the empty gap underneath the CD player, which will allow enough clearance for the tablet to sit on top of the waterfall. Lastly, we need to make room for the AUX port. The AUX port and the power port on the tablet are going to be on the side of the tablet. This means that they're going to fish in behind the dash. We need to remove some foam and some of the plastic that holds the dash and the foam together. While this does look intimidating, all we simply did was place the tablet in, trace out where the AUX port or the power port is going to come in, and make sure that we had enough clearance for those ports to run behind the dash. For extra clearance, we went ahead and took a razor blade and shaved off the power button and the volume button on the tablet. These were sitting either on the top or the bottom and when the tablet was placed in the waterfall, these buttons were triggering them themselves. 
This way, now when the tablet's in, we do not get any feedback from any of the buttons. However, they are still able to be pressed with your finger, no problem. Okay, so here we are. We're all suited up. We have the waterfall all in and secured. We have the tablet placed in. We have a custom Volvo screensaver. Why not? Looks more factory that way. Straight on view. Everything's working great. Those two cords you see on the side are just my iPhone charger and the extra augs that will go into the iPhone for phone calls. Uh, if we had to do it again, we probably would not wrap in suede or material. We would probably do a finish uh, sanding and prepping and do a paint match. I think the suede is going to get worn out a little bit over time, especially around the buttons. Okay guys, so we are taking an initial look at the final product here. So, as mentioned, we probably wouldn't do suede again, but it did a great job of filling in the gaps. This thing will probably come off at some point, get some uh, body work, and then a custom paint, uh, either black or, or something like that. So I just want to show you uh, how this thing uh, fits in, functionality. So as mentioned, we have our AUGS, which is a splitter, goes into the factory CD deck, splits off to the iPhone, hardwired power cable into the 12 volt cigarette lighter here underneath. We have our infotainment screen, which is turned backwards. One thing that I am gonna recommend is before you turn it backwards, you're gonna wanna dial in your settings. You don't need the screen to see your volume. You do that by ear, a little louder, a little less louder. Radio, essentially with this upgrade, you're probably not gonna be using the radio. You did this so that you could stream Pandora, Spotify, whatever it is. In terms of fan controls, they say, well, you're not gonna know. Well, you know, I don't need to see that the fan is on 12 clicks instead of 15 clicks. I'm just gonna turn it up to what feels appropriate based on how cool or hot I wanna be. And in terms of AC and heater, same thing. If it's hot in the summer, 110 degrees, I have this temperature all the way down. If it's up here in the mountains and it's uh, 22 degrees, I have the heater all the way up. And same thing, I can just balance it in between to my feel, not to what the digital display of the infotainment screen back there is doing. One thing you will wanna do though, is if you're running AM, if you're running CD, that is running through the Volvo factory system. We have the premium sound. When you go to mode and you are using the AUGS, it's gonna be based on the output of the device. So the mixer or the equalizer that we have in our tablet is definitely going to be outputting a certain sound. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you know that it, it may be different, right? So when I listen to music off of the iPhone versus off of the Lenovo tablet, the feed is a little bit different based on the sound processing that they have and that they're outputting. So another thing I did before I turned my infotainment screen around is I plugged this in, I fired up Pandora, and I went through a couple different samples of music, rock, rap, whatever it is, and I dialed and equalized in my sound, bass, treble, surround, faders, front to back, side to side, all of that, just to make sure that when this is in here and playing, I have the best sound for what my ear's gonna do. Further, a lot of tablets or also uh, apps that you can get are going to allow you to equalize further visually on the screen but you want to make sure that your system is dialed the best it can be before you put your screen away it's not a big deal because you can always just pop this out two torques here two torques down here and you can pull the thing out and grab your screen and do whatever you need to it but try to set it up as best you can um, before you get in there okay we're back i had to stop real quick because i needed two hands to put the tablet into uh, the hole. So again, uh, what we may do is we may put some spacers on the back of the top of the CD unit to kind of keep the top edge popped out a little. We can see the bottom edge is a couple millimeters off the, the bottom. The top edge is maybe double that. It kind of sits at an angle. Um, so just for, for uniform sake, we may play with that. Um, so again, just quickly, I'm going to go more into detail with a screen share on the setup that we have here, but we are in, I have my quick apps here and I can go ahead and say, you know what, let's go ahead and fire up Pandora. I'm currently on Wi-Fi, but I'm going to, uh, no, we're on offline mode. So offline mode, even though I'm on Wi-Fi, I have it set up as if I am not. 
So we have our tunes. All of that. We can go ahead and close that down, keep our tunes going. Pop over to Google Maps. Again, the built-in GPS chip with or without Wi-Fi. It's gonna GPS locate this device and lay over the Google Maps that we have downloaded. I'll talk more about that. Really cool. Got some Waze on there. Waze is cool because it offers the music overlay. Boom, we can see our Pandora and our map at the same time. Close it, boom. Well, let's bring it back up, boom. So that's real cool as well. Oops, I accidentally pressed pause on that. There we go. Um, dash command. We have our OBD2. You can't really see it down there. Let's see. Yeah, we got our OBD2 down there. And uh, we're connected. Look at that. I didn't even have to resync it. Boom. So we got our data. Give it a little rever. Everything's connected there. So we can data log at the same time. We can say start the data log, close that out. It's still running. Do I like my Pandora screen up? Maybe I like my map screen up. Whatever it is, pretty solid. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to a screen share and we'll talk about the different configurations that we have. But overall, pretty factory look. Minus the suede, that looks a little unfactory, but it came out nice and clean. The fitment's great. We're very pleased. Oh, one thing we're gonna notice uh, and mention too is we did uh, decide to stick with the splitter. So if somebody does a call, let's say uh, somebody's calling in, I'm driving, the phone rings. I don't have a third phone here. So all I'm gonna do is push pause and push answer. And then I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, let's just do a recent call. So it's gonna take the phone uh, output for the phone call and then same thing, radio is paused. And then we have our sound, which goes right through as well. Calls over, hang up, resume my tunes.